Today we're going to look at solving acceleration problems just graphically. Using a velocity versus time graph we can solve a whole different host of problems. Uh, and if you have the note sheet you should follow along and copy down what you see in this video on your note sheet. So let's go back to a simple situation where something is moving at a constant velocity and remind ourselves like how we find the acceleration and how we find the displacement during motion. So in this first example we have something moving with a constant positive velocity of 20 meters per second and which means it's moving forward uh, at a constant rate. Well remember acceleration we can find by taking the slope of a velocity versus time graph and the slope of velocity versus time graph is just the change in velocity divided by the change in time. So if we pick two points, let's say the beginning point and the end point starts with a positive velocity of 20 meters per second and it ends with a positive velocity of 20 meters per second. <clears throat> so our change in velocity from positive 20 to positive 20 is zero meters per second. There's no change in the velocity. That happens over a time from zero to ten seconds, so it happens over a time of ten seconds. So our acceleration just turns out to be, since there's no change in velocity, zero meters per second per second. Now if we want to find the displacement, remember, it defines how far something travels and in what direction. When we look at a velocity versus time graph, uh, the displacement is equal to the area between the velocity line and the zero. So if we shade in this area between the line and zero, that will tell us what our displacement is. This shape uh, is rectangular, so we're just looking at the area of a rectangle. So our displacement in that case is just going to be, displacement is going to be the height times the width. Well here we have a height of 20 meters per second. We're going to multiply that by our width of 10 seconds and it turns out that our displacement is 20 meters per second times 10 seconds gives us a displacement of 200 meters. We can use those same techniques to also find the acceleration and the displacement for an object that's undergoing constant acceleration. So here, you see that the, over time the velocity gets more positive, so it shows that it's getting faster and faster while moving forward. So let's first find the acceleration. Well, remember the acceleration comes from the slope of this line. So let's pick two points and let's find out what uh, the slope of that is. Acceleration. And looking at a velocity versus time graph is the change in velocity divided by the change in time. The change from the first point we select to the second point that we select. So it's going from 0 up to 50 meters per second. So the change is positive 50 meters per second. Divided by the change in time, well it took a total of 10 seconds for that to happen. So it's positive 50 meters per second divided by 10 seconds. And it turns out that our acceleration is plus 5 meters per second for each second, telling us that our velocity is increasing by 5 meters per second in one second. We can see that in one second it goes up to 5 meters per second, and in another second it goes up to 10 meters per second. So the change each second is positive 5 meters per second. Okay, let me erase this real quick, give a little bit of room and space. Now if we want to find the displacement in those 10 seconds while this object is accelerating, how far it travels, we can use the same thing we talked about up here. The displacement is equal to the area between the line and the zero axis. Well, the area is not a rectangular shape anymore. We just kind of fill this in. This area, which is the displacement, is triangular. So if we want to find the area or the displacement, we have to find the area of this triangle. If you remember back to geometry, the area of a triangle is equal to one half times the base of the triangle, that's kind of like the width, multiplied by the height. And so looking at this specific triangle, we have one half 
times the base. The base is the width of the triangle, so that's 10 seconds. We have to have the number and the unit. And the height of this triangle is from 0 to 50 meters per second. So the height of our triangle is 50 with units of meters per second. So to find the final answer, I'm just going to multiply everything through. Let's first see if any of the units cancel out. We have a seconds times a meters over seconds, and so we can actually cancel out those seconds. But 1 half times 10 is 5. 5 times 50 is 250. And the only, only units we have left over is meters. So this thing travels a total displacement of 250 meters in those 10 seconds. So we can see that even when the velocity is changing, we can find things like acceleration and displacement fairly easily just by either finding the slope of our line, that's the acceleration, or the area under the curve, that is our displacement. Let's see how we can use this to solve a little bit more complicated problem. So it says a car initially traveling at positive 40 meters per second. So at time zero, let's say it has a velocity of 40 meters per second. Skids to a stop over a displacement of 80 meters. And we want to know how long did it take the or how much time did it take the car to stop? And let's find out what that acceleration is over time. We won't worry about this part. So if we're moving forward and slowing down, we're skidding to a stop, that means the velocity over some unknown amount of time has to go down to a final value of 0 meters per second. And I'm just going to put a T there because we don't know how much time that takes. But it does tell us that this happened over a displacement of 80 meters. It continued to move forward 80 meters while slowing down. So that this area, if we shade in this triangle between the line and our zero velocity line, that area is 80 meters because area is equal to displacement. So we want to try to find time. Well, let's see if we can set up an equation. Remember, area is, or displacement is equal to the area. Well, displacement is the area of our triangle. And we calculate that using 1 half times base times height. And the given information said that it's moving forward, or its displacement is 80 meters. So all of that has to equal 80 meters when you multiply that out. So let's fill in what we know. Um, we've got 1 half times the base of our triangle. Well, the base of our triangle is really the width. It goes from 0 to some unknown time t. So since we don't know that time, let's just plug in t as our unknown variable. Now we're going to multiply by the height of our triangle. Well, the height of our triangle that we know goes from 0 to 40, so the height is 40 meters per second. We multiply all that together. We said before that it has to equal a total displacement of 80 meters. So now we've got a, an algebraic equation we have to solve for t. I'm going to first simplify the left side and multiply 1 half times 40. So we get the t. So we get t multiplied by 1 half times 40 or 20 meters per second. And that's all multiplied by t, and that's going to be equal to our 80 meters. So to solve for t, we need to get t by itself to get rid of that 20 meters per second, we need to divide the left side by 20 meters per second. Well, if we do it to the left side of the equation, we also have to do it to the right side of the equation. Divide it by 20 meters per second. You can see that the 20 meters per second cancels, and now time is equal to the 80 meters divided by 20 meters per second. The meter units uh, end up canceling, seconds ends up going in the top, and our answer is 80 divided by 20 is 4, and our only unit left over is seconds. So it takes 4 seconds for this object to skid to a stop. So it's kind of like part A. Part B is solving for the acceleration. What was the car's acceleration during this time? Well, let's go back to our acceleration equation. Remember that comes from the slope of our velocity versus time graph, which is like the rise divided by the run. 
which is how much our velocity changes divided by how much our time changes. And let's use the starting velocity and the end of ending velocity. The starting time, zero seconds, and the ending time we figured out that comes to rest after a total of four seconds. So from the beginning to the end, from 40 meters per second down to zero meters per second, the change in velocity is negative 40 because it goes from a positive value all the way down to zero. Remember, triangle means change. It did then a total of four seconds from zero to four. So it, its velocity reduced by 40 meters per second in a total of four seconds. Negative 40 divided by four is negative 10. And our units are meters per second per second. So this shows that every second the velocity of the car was being reduced by 10 meters per second. Or we can say that the acceleration of our car is equal to negative 10 meters per second each second. Now you guys can use these notes uh, and these example problems to try some of your own on the homework assignment.